eyes are right over the ball. With your eyes right over the ball, as the shoulders swing the arms, then the head can remain very stable. Another rule that's unique for the short game is that instead of using the bottom of the face of the club, we use the top line of the head. We line up the top line with the line we're going to put down or chip down. Another rule that's unique to the short game, different from the long game, in the long game, we hang our arm straight down and there's an angle between the arm and the shaft. In the short game, we hang the shaft of the club down with our hands high. Since we're using our putting stroke for chipping, another rule that's unique for the short game is when we hang the shaft down, the toe is on the ground and the heel is off the ground. In the long game, as we set up with the butt of the club close to the left leg, the heel is on the ground and the toe is off. In the short game, the toe is down and the heel is up. Another rule that's unique for the short game is the grip. According to the rules of golf, it's illegal to use a brace or an aid. However, we can use the butt of the club against the inside of the left forearm as a brace. Let's look at how we achieve this. We place the club in the left hand at the V at the end of the lifeline. This allows us to run the butt of the club up against the left forearm. As we place the right hand on the grip, we do this with the pads of all four fingertips. The index finger of the left hand runs against the knuckles of the right hand. The thumb and index finger of the right hand and the index finger of the left hand work back, firming up the butt of the grip against the inside of the left forearm. This allows the butt of the grip to act as a splint. Now the reason we use the pads of the fingertips on both hands is because they're 70% more sensitive than the rest of the hand. This is where we get our best feel. Why do we put the butt of the grip against the inside of the left wrist? From here down, in both hands are 25% of the joints in the body. We want to eliminate movement in all of them. So as we hang the club down, put our left hand on the club, right hand on the club, index finger of the left hand, pushing against the knuckles, index finger of the right hand, pulling back. We firm up the wrists so they can work only in one manner as part of the club. Let's watch this during a stroke. Now, as we put the hands on the grip, the palms face each other. The reason we put the palms on the club facing each other is because as you naturally stand with your shoulders and relax, the palms face each other. During an important stroke, say to win your club championship or win a tournament, your palms will have a tendency to go to their natural position. So put them on the grip facing each other. As in the long game, the power for your chipping and putting stroke comes from the major muscles in the upper back and shoulders. The shoulders swing the arms. As we set up for the shoulders to swing the arms, I would suggest that you use the feeling of the knob on the inside of your right elbow to lead the stroke. As your shoulders swing your arms, the knob on the inside of the elbow of your right elbow leads the stroke. 
Let's watch the upper back and shoulders swing the arms. This knob is what leads the stroke. In the long game, once we reached the completion of our back turn, we made what we call a world-class move with the knees and the hips turning and dropping onto the power plane. What this move does is take all the slack out of the big swing. In the short game, we have a similar move. As I go through my procedure, which we'll cover in a minute, set up the index finger of the left hand and the thumb and index finger of the right hand work back as I start this stroke, taking all the slack out of my wrists and shoulders. Let's watch this during a stroke. During the 60s and 70s, we saw a particular player on the tour, and we saw a lot of his neck in here. He'd keep his left shoulder down and away from his left ear as far as possible. That was Jack Nicklaus. That's important to get the left shoulder out of the way with the shoulder stroke as the shoulders swing the arms. Let's watch the left shoulder get out of the way during a stroke. Now that we've defined the rules that are the same for the short game as the long game, and the rules that are unique to the short game, let's take those rules out on the golf course and apply them through the seven fundamentals. The short game is chipping, putting, and short pitches. In putting, fundamental one is analyzing the total situation surrounding the shot you're preparing to hit your target. On the green, we're determining distance and direction. We start fundamental one on the green by spotting the ball. Then we go to the hole. When I was in South Africa, I had the great pleasure of spending some time with Bobby Locke. Bobby Locke is known as one of the best all-time putters that's ever played the game. In my conversation about putting in the short game with Bobby Locke, I asked him what he thought was the most important thing in putting. He told me, lad, you've got to determine the point the ball's going to enter the hole. Now let me show you how we do this. As you look from where you are straight at the hole, this is a straight line. If this was a flat putt, that is a straight line from where you are to the hole. Next, we determine the high and low side of the hole. The high side of this hole is right here, and the low side is over here. Since this is the high side of the hole, we know the putt is going to break to the left. Then, we determine the entry point between the straight line you are looking at and the line coming into the center of the hole as the ball will be rolling. That is the entry point. Also, Bobby said, the entry point and the last two feet leading to that point. This is how you determine where you're going to put the putt. Now that we've determined the entry point, let's consider speed. I would suggest maximum break and minimum speed. A ball rolling to the center of the hole, which is minimum speed, will fall in from the edges, making the four and a quarter inch hole much larger. Another good thing about maximum break and minimum speed is you won't have a bunch of three and four footers coming back to the hole all day. Now that we've determined maximum break, minimum speed, and the entry point, let's look at how we get the path 
defined in our own mind before we hit the putt. Now using maximum brake, minimum speed, a ball traveling between these two lines will fall in the hole. Again, here's my entry point. As I walk back to place my ball back on the green, I look from this angle, then here, then here, then here. That keeps my mind lined up. As I spot my ball, I can take the manufacturer's label and point it down a line to the high point of the arc before it starts turning in to the entry point. This helps me line my mind up. Something else it does is when I get up over the putt, I can put my putter perpendicular to that label. Every one of us have astigmatism to one degree or another. Once you line the label up from behind the hole, then when you get over the ball, you will be able to cancel out any stigmatism you have. When you get over the ball, the label may look crooked, but learn to trust it. In Fundamental 2, we select the simplest shot and a club to hit that shot with. In Fundamental 1, we were determining the distance and direction and the speed, so we have selected the shot. Since we only have one putter in our bag, selecting the club is a very simple task. While we're talking about the club, let's consider a couple things. 